Hey guys, in my last video I showed y'all how I painted these beautiful blue flowers on my iPad Pro with Adobe Fresco. So today I'm going to show y'all how to prep that artwork so we can get it ready to put in a pattern. So let's get started. This is my artwork and this is what I had painted on Adobe Fresco. You can see all of the original layers that were uh, created with the iPad. And what we want to do is we want to make our artwork flat. So we're going to merge all of our artwork layers and then we're going to make a copy of our art. So we're going to hide that layer that we just created. And then we're going to merge the background with the original art layer. And so what this does is it makes your artwork opaque. So now we're going to click on the magic eraser tool and we're going to click on any of the background area that has white. So when you do this, you can change the tolerance. Um, you do want to keep contiguous checked if you have white elements in your artwork that you want to keep. If you don't have any white elements that you want to keep, you can go ahead and uncheck contiguous. So I do have elements I want to keep, so I'm going to keep it checked. And I'm going to go through and delete all of the white spaces that I do not want. Okay, so here you can see part of my flower has been erased because the tolerance um, allowed that light yellow to be included as a white color. So this is why we need to keep a copy of our original artwork. Um, so you can see where the pixels are with that artwork layer turned on. I'm going to uncheck it for now just so I can continue erasing all the white parts that I don't want and we'll come back to the flower and I'll show you how to fix this. Let's get back to this flower over here that we need to fix. So a really simple way of fixing this is we're going to turn on that art layer that we had copied. We're going to make a new layer under both of the art layers. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a paintbrush and it really doesn't matter which one that you pick. I'm just going to use the same one that I used to make my artwork. And I'm going to select a white color. I will tone down the opacity just a little bit and what we're going to do is we're just going to paint a little white background underneath both of those art layers. And so what this will do is it will make this flower opaque where these petals are kind of chopped off. So that's one way of prepping your artwork for Illustrator so you can make a pattern. I will show you another way to prep your artwork just because sometimes your artwork will work with one technique and sometimes it doesn't and you need to use a different technique to do this. So here's the second technique. We will merge all of the layers together except for the background again. You do want to keep that white background um, separate this time so we can make a copy of our pixel layer with all of the artwork on it. Go ahead and hide that layer and we're going to work with the original art layer. Okay, so now that you have the um, art layer selected, we're going to click on the magic wand tool. I am going to decrease my tolerance down to 10 and I will click on the transparent background. We want to inverse our selection so that our art, the actual pixels of our art, are selected now, not the background. And then we will go back to select, modify, and contract. So I contracted my artwork by three, 
so you can see the dotted line here is a little bit further inside of my artwork. And the reason why we're doing this is so we can physically put a white background behind our artwork and make it opaque that way. So here we're going to add a new layer and make sure it's underneath your artwork. And a really simple step is we're going to click on the bucket or fill tool and you just click in one of the spaces that is selected and you have opaque artwork now. So those are the two techniques of getting your artwork prepped for a pattern. And now what we're going to do is open up Illustrator and we are going to open up the swatches panel and in the top right corner you're going to click on the three bar menu go to select all unused and we're going to delete those swatches now we're going to go back to photoshop and one by one we're going to use the lasso tool to select each individual element copy it and paste it into the Illustrator file. What I like to do is, especially with a complicated pattern like this, I like to open up a new document in Illustrator and also delete those swatches that are unused as well. And so I'm going to toggle back and forth between the document that has all of my elements in it and I'm going to go back to the blank document and actually make my new pattern and this is just easier so you don't lose track of the elements that you have so you don't accidentally delete anything that you <laughs> worked so hard to get into Illustrator in the first place. So now to make your pattern you have all of the elements in the new document and have them selected and then you'll click on Window and Pattern Options. And what this will do will open a new panel. And in the Patterns Options panel, you will click on the three bar menu and select Make Pattern. So what this will do is it's going to repeat the selected elements and it's going to tile them depending on the tile type, which can be a grid brick by row, brick by column, hex by column, and hex by row. And so each pattern will have a um, different look with each grid type. So now is the fun part. You get to move all of your individual elements one by one and see them change in real time with the repeated tiles. If you want to test your pattern on a larger scale, what you'll do is click on Done and you can select the rectangle tool and draw a large box and then you're going to select the swatch that has your pattern in it. You can easily go back and edit your pattern if you don't like it and the way to do that is to double click on the swatch icon that has your pattern in it and then you can continue editing your pattern.
Once you're done and satisfied, click on done. You need to open up your swatches panel, which it should already be opened, and click on the three bar menu on the top right corner. We're going to click on save swatch library as ASE. And when your new window opens up, you can name your pattern and you can even save it under a new folder. And then you're going to click on create and save. And it's also a good idea to save the AI file um, that you've been working in. So now you're done with your pattern files. You can close everything out. And next time you want to use your pattern, all you have to do is open up your swatches panel and you can go to the three bar menu on the top right corner and then open swatch library. Click on user defined and you can find your file in there. You can also open your library up by opening the three book icon on the bottom left corner of your swatches panel. When you go to use your pattern, if the pattern itself is too large on scale, what you can do is you can click on the box that has your pattern in it and go to object and transform and then select scale. You want to keep everything at 100%, but you want to check transform patterns. And then you're going to take your selection arrow and then click on the box and resize your box. And when you resize your box, it will also resize your pattern. So when you have your pattern the size that you want it, go ahead and make sure that you go back to Object Transform Scale and click on that box again for Transform Patterns. And then when you resize your box again, your pattern will stay the same size that you just changed it to. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something new and I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. God bless.